Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Nacho Problems, where we turn ordinary recipes into extraordinary nachos. I'm Nacho Queen, but you can call me M. We're taking a quick break from our world tour to make a viewer-requested recipe. This week, we're making chicken fried steak nachos. Chicken fried steak is a popular dish in the southern U.S. It's comprised of a tenderized steak, breaded and fried, topped with white pepper gravy, and usually served with mashed potatoes. It is comfort food at its finest. So let's get started. Step one, the toppings. We're starting in reverse again because we're making mashed potatoes for the toppings, and they take the longest to cook. I'm making them from scratch, but if you wanna use instant or even pre-made potatoes, then go right ahead. Remember, the nacho community does not judge. I'm using about one pound of potatoes, peeled and sliced into one inch chunks, about three quarters cup of milk, warmed, a quarter cup of butter, diced up, and you'll probably want some salt and pepper. We'll start with a medium sauce pot filled with cold water. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of salt into it, then add in the potatoes and cook over high heat for 10 to 15 minutes or until tender. You can test this by stabbing them with a fork. Once done, drain them and then return to the pot. Now it's time to get our workout and start mashing. If you've got a potato ricer, that would also work. Mash them all up until you've gotten rid of any lumps. Then add in the butter and continue mashing. Next, add the milk in about a quarter cup at a time, mixing well after each addition until your potatoes are the consistency you want them. Finish this off with a little salt and pepper, and that's our topping. Next up is step two, the chips. We're going to make mini chicken fried steaks for our chips. And for that we need some steak. This is cube steak, which is just a steak that the butcher has run through a tenderizer. If you can't find this, get yourself a nice inexpensive cut of steak and tenderize it yourself by pounding it flat with a mallet or rolling pin. Then just cut them down to chip size. One to one and a half cups milk, two to three eggs, and two to three cups of seasoned flour. I really like this blend, but you can always make up your own. I would recommend using salt, black pepper, garlic, onion powder, and paprika, but feel free to add whatever spices you like. We'll start by setting up our breading stations. Now, typically we do three bowls, but for this we only need two. In the first, you'll add in your seasoned flour. I'll start with about two cups and top up as needed. In the other bowl, we're going to crack two eggs, give them a quick beating with a fork, then add in one cup of milk and mix it all together. Remember, you can always add more to your bowls, but starting off with too much can be wasteful. Now, to bread our steaks, we go first into the flour, then into the milk, and then back to the flour for a second time. Then place them in a single layer on a plate until you're ready to fry. We've heated about a quarter inch of oil up in our pan to about 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 Celsius. We're going to carefully place our steak in and fry for about two to three minutes before turning and frying for another two to three minutes. Then remove to a paper towel lined plate and that's the chips. Let's skip ahead to step three, the cheese. For our cheese, I'll be making a simple white pepper gravy. And for that we need about one and a half cups of milk, a quarter cup of butter, a quarter cup of flour. You could use the same seasoned flour you used for the steaks, but I like to just add a little salt and pepper to taste. We'll start by melting our butter in a small sauce pot over medium heat. Next, add in the flour and start to stir vigorously. As it starts to cook, you'll realize you only put in half the flour, so add in the other half, you mini. Continue to stir and cook for about two minutes. Add in one cup of milk and keep whisking, making sure to get into the corners of the pan really well. Cook for two to three minutes or until it starts to thicken. Now add in your salt and pepper and continue to stir and cook for another one to two minutes. If you feel your gravy is too thick, add in another one quarter to one half cup of milk. Stir for another minute until fully incorporated and that's our cheese. All that's left is Step four, let's eat. Let's start with some of our steak chips. Now add on some of the gravy. Add a lovely little dollop of potatoes. And finally, I decided to add some fresh chives for color. 
We're skipping the wheel this week because cameraman has been so hard at work cleaning the pool, I thought he deserved a treat. He was so excited he forgot to hit record for the first bite, so let's go back and see if he likes the second. These were a big hit with my family. They like that you get a larger breading to steak ratio over normal chicken fried steak, so we might start making it this way from now on. Well, that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, give it a like and please consider subscribing if you want to see more nacho videos. If you have an idea for a future video, you can leave a comment below or tag me on the site previously known as Twitter. I'm at NachoProblemsYT. I've also linked my blue sky below, but you won't find me on Facebook, Instagram, or threads. If you're looking to steal my apron, well, that's nacho merch, but you can get your own at a link in the description. Now, I was out in the garden today and a few of my onions seem to have been nibbled. So I need to have a word with the hound about why she'll chase an Amazon driver, but not a rabbit. But that's not your problem. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.